Mr. Speaker, it seems like just yesterday when a number of community leaders encouraged me to run for Congress. Against all odds, we ended up winning a very hotly contested Republican primary and the journey began. Throughout my career, I've learned, leaned on lessons from my Reagan White House days where my boss and mentor was Ken Duberstein, who later was his chief of staff. Reagan worked both sides of the aisle to get things done, caring less about who got the credit. And I made a promise that such a principle would be my guiding light, especially in these days of divided government that is the only way one can actually get legislation enacted. There's been something special in my household with highlights and lowlights that we often discuss at the dinner table. As I reflect back, there have certainly been more highlights representing the wonderful and diverse corner of Southwest Michigan. These folks are truly the salt of the earth and I love them all, I really do, even the few that don't always love me. As chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee, a huge highlight was 21st Century Cures, hailed as the most important piece of legislation passed in that Congress. It laid the foundation for Operation Warp Speed and faster drug approvals, including the first vaccine that Pfizer produced in Kalamazoo. And now once again with my partner, Diana Gett, we've pursuing Cures 2.0 with all the disease and patient groups who joined us on Cures. My driving mission has been jobs in the economy, whether it was working on a North American energy independent plan, pursuing renewable resources, Yes, dealing with climate change, changing the tax laws so that no longer do we have the highest corporate tax rates in the world, which drove so many of our job creators someplace other than America. Being the Republican lead with John Dingell on the auto rescue plan, the industry and all the jobs that came with it was simply too big to fail. Pipeline safety, protecting the Great Lakes, our drinking water has also been my focus. Every family in America deserves clean water. I've been more than willing to stand up for the less fortunate and vulnerable, including my vote last week to cap the price of insulin. I've had the opportunity to visit our brave troops in harm's way overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, witness the tragedy of war like we see today with Putin's invasion in Ukraine. It was critical to pass the recent humanitarian and military aid, yes it was, and of course witnessed 9-11 here and pushed hard on the recommendation by the 9-11 Commission to protect against such an attack again. As a former Boy Scout, I believe in having, leaving the campground better than one found it. I've worked with seven administrations, seven house speakers. None of them would call me a rubber stamp. If it's good policy for Michigan, it's good enough for all of us. As a vice chair of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, we have pushed the envelope to get things done, taking on some complex and often controversial issues that others may want to just sweep under the rug. Immigration reform, including border security for our dreamers and farmers. A real honest to goodness infrastructure bill that passed 69 to 30 in the Senate, but then hit the rocks here in the House, barely surviving Trump's op opposition despite his call for a proposal twice as expensive with no pay fors. I've worked alongside real giants who put principle over politics. Greg Walden, Paul Henry, Mike Rogers, T. Berry, Susan Brooks, Dent, John Lewis, Mike Castle, Henry Hyde, Amo Houghton, Dave Camp, Nancy Johnson, and Don Young were among the best. I worked daily on all things Michigan, particularly with Debbie Dingell, and we've been hitting the road to push for civility. Hopefully civility and bipartisanship versus discord can rule, not rue the day. Current colleagues like CMR, Womack, Mario, Josh, Brian Fitzpatrick, Tom Cole, Dave McKinley, Kildy, Katko, Kurt Schrader, Dean Phillips, Peter Meyer, and my friend Stenny cut the mustard too. I've been blessed having a wonderful, hardworking staff all these years. Yes, two of them, including my chief of staff, Joan Hillebrands, have been on my team 36 years with another handful between 15 and 30 years. Our district team has worked on so many different casework issues in the tens of thousands. Throughout the COVID nightmare, we worked with our local bankers to save dozens of small businesses with PPP. And we worked to get vital supplies to our wonderful health facilities and frontline workers who are still so stressed today. Even the best stories has a last chapter. This is it for me. I've done the zillions of airline miles back and forth. I've signed Fred to over a million letters cast more votes than anyone in this chamber while here, and by most accounts have succeeded in making a difference, accomplishing what I've set out to do with more unfinished work still yet to come. Arthur Brooks recently wrote about three traits most important in life, 
honesty, compassion, and faith. I'd like to think those same yardsticks were passed along to me by my parents watching on C-SPAN now. Someone asked my wife, Amy, what would be the next chapter? She said, and they lived happily ever after. Indeed, we will. I want to thank Amy, our two kids, three grandkids, for giving me so much to look forward to. Thanks again to the people of my district who place their faith and confidence in me all these great years. God bless the USA. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.